Hey guys, what's up? I just hurt my neck grooving to our intro music here on the show. I, I thought you were joking. <laughs> no, like, oh, like I, just, I just got like that, I don't know, like crick in my neck and suddenly like, oh, fuck, that's... I am getting it's older getting old, all well the fucking time. Well I, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I don't know. I can't remember. Steve, are you older or younger than me? I would be older than you. Cause yeah? Because you're senior year, right? Well, I, I graduated, yeah. Well, okay. Then, yeah, I'm older than I'm you. college. <laughs> I'm now, older than all of you. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. You're, like, miles above... Yeah. If you are older than Doom and listen to this, please write in so you can make him <laughs> feel young again. I hate you all. <laughs> oh, guys, welcome. This is the Four Wars Podcast, episode 62. We're Damn. finally making it around here. It, you know, the sad thing is, the RPG podcast, I think as of, like, next week, they will have caught up with us, and they've been going for, like, half the time that we have. Yeah, but in all fairness, they release, what, two, three episodes a week? True. Two. Uh, two. Two. So, Dudes. I don't know. Anyways, lots of news to get through, so I'm just going to throw this out quick. I am joined this week by Aaron Dune, Spike, and Aaron Harris, and Steve Frostbite Allen. Let's go, Yo. Allen. Our other two new guys are out for various reasons, uh, but they will be back. Um, there'll be a few yeah. changes during the summer or coming months here. Yeah, um, a few of us have like vacations and stuff, so right, we have to get away sometimes. Some missing uh, over the weeks of the summer here, so so news, news, news. Uh, don't forget that the network giveaway is still going on with Sweetwater here. If you want to get your own USB Nessie microphone, stop in um, for our podcast. All you have to do is send in a suggestion for a new segment or talk about one that we've done recently. You can send that in along with all the other uh, little scavenger hunt things that the other podcasts have going on to, uh, what is it, contest at trinityforcepodcast.com? Trinityforcenetwork.com. Trinityforcenetwork.com. Right. So there's six things in total to do between all the podcasts. Each one has one little thing. You have until the 31st to get all that stuff sent in. Uh, Next bit of news here, T-Force Community Ranked Nights are back, still going strong. Uh, 70 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesdays. You can join uh, them there for all that stuff. If you want to check out more information on it, head on over to our Reddit. Uh, yeah, they usually have like three games going at a time. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, Reddit.com forward slash R forward slash T Force Network or Trinity Force Network. No, T Force Network. T Force Network. <laughs> Network. <laughs> I have it written down here. What am I doing? Uh, so, yeah, get your ELO on there. Uh, new Patreon rewards for Hearthstone exclusive. Um, if you uh, contribute ten dollars a month, you get two replay reviews on Hearthstone. Twenty-five dollars, it's five replay reviews, and seventy-five dollars, a little stretch goal, but you get five replay reviews and a one-on-one session with one of our very talented, high-ranking uh, Hearthstone players within the network. Yeah, and those those guys are pretty legit. A lot of them have been legend before, and they they. Mm-hmm. Definitely listen to Hearth like, of the Cards. I know Vol, all, Vol, all is he part of them have it? been legend at some point. Uh, most of them are multiple legends. So. I know a few of them have done like certain tournaments and stuff like like major tournaments and stuff like that before too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Vol was Vol. in Kespa mm-hmm. uh, tournament and stuff. So, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are good, and I mean, I I know me just talking in Slack with them and stuff. I've picked up so much from them in um in just how to play and how to build decks. I was thanks to uh, Xanthos, I was ripping up ranked uh in ripping up ranked with a uh, secret paladin before it got nerfed into the ground. So, yeah. <laughs> how can he tell you about it? It's a secret. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, come on, Lashok isn't here. I have to get that out. That was for, that was for him. He's already infinitely better at puns than any of us. <laughs> he just tries way too fucking hard. It's like all he's doing when he's on this show, just thinking, how can I shoehorn more puns in? Uh, I support it. Yeah. More news coming still. Uh, we are now going to be starting our own Overwatch podcast. That just launched uh-huh. a few uh-huh. days ago. Uh, the official launch, anyways. So, 
if you like Overwatch, like playing it, you think you're some hot shit with it, and you want to be a part of the podcast we're joining, we are having open auditions. So, all you have to do is record an at max five minute uh, recording answering the following question. Do you believe Overwatch is ready to be an eSport and why or why not? Then you upload the MP3 to Google Drive or Dropbox and email the link to feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com. The deadline is June 8th at midnight. This is also another reason you should come to the um, subreddit. This post is stickied on the subreddit here. It's in green text uh, and it'll give you a direct link um, to all that information that I just said. Also, you can head to our website, trinityforcenetwork.com, and that is also on the main site there if you want to look at that information for yourself. And yeah, but this is re- really an exciting opportunity. I mean, the game is yeah. fresh. Everyone's talking about it. If, you, if you're really passionate about it and you've been listening to our podcast, like this is a, a great chance to get involved and, and you know maybe join the team. And, and we... I know personally I'd be very interested to see what the network does with an Overwatch podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, Frost, we know a couple people who, you know, auditioned for a podcast in the network and joined summarily, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. yeah me, even... me and Frost both uh, tried out for this podcast, so, I mean, it, it's legit when we hold tryouts, so we make sure that we get the right people. Yeah. And, you know give everyone a fair chance and uh so i mean if you really do play overwatch or interest in the game and stuff i mean just throw your hat in the ring you know give right. it a shot you have nothing to lose like even if you're not sure like that you're totally comfortable being part of the podcast um please send in your sort of resume to the feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com we're always looking for ways to get more people involved within the community to help it grow Um, so if you don't think that maybe you're ready to, you know, be part of a podcast, but you say, oh, I can do so much with audio editing, or I'm pretty good with putting together, like, YouTube videos and stuff like that. Or articles. Oh, yeah, we're always looking for new stuff for that. Uh, honestly, that's how I got started with all of this stuff. I started with, um, Bronze Bootcamp, and, yeah. Yeah, as Adam always puts it, like, if you want to get involved with the network, like, pitch your idea and where you think you can help the network grow and mm-hmm. like if if like if you believe in it and we we see the vision that you have and we want we think we can work with you then we're happy to you know look about ways we can add you to the team oh, yeah. it's just a matter of you have to come with the idea and and the vision i mean lashock started with like battle arena i think we started writing in the four wards i think when we were uh was it looking for I forget exactly what we were looking for, but he said, you know, I'd, I'd love to get involved in some way. And yeah, he started with Battle Arena, then made his own uh, RPG community. Yo, and... yo, so funny story about that. Okay, what? So he, I remember that week there was a, so I, I'm, I'm on the R subreddit a lot, r slash T-Force network. And mm-hmm. there was a thread about, does anyone in the T-Force community like play tabletop war games? And, you know, like there was uh, not that many responses, but there was a couple. And then a few days later, someone named Lashak, who I remember had written into Four Wars, was like, hey, does anyone play like like tabletop like or does anyone play like RPG games or like, you know, like D&D, things like that Mm -hmm. within the community? And like my first instinct was like, oh, this is probably similar to that other thread that showed up. Like, and then I basically was like, hey, you might want to check out this thread. I didn't think it was going to get that much traction. And now, like, right? we have this in to- whole T-Force RPG. I think, like, we're over yeah. 100 people playing games <laughs> with T-Force RPG, and there's still plenty of spots open for new stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Long story short, if you want to get involved in the community some way, please send uh, a resume to um, the feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com or even to us. We'll get you hooked up. So, uh, last little bit of news here. Uh, also, from our Reddit, if you want to play Blizzard games like Overwatch, like Diablo 3, like Warcraft even, with the uh, Trinity Force community, there is another post over there. Uh, um... Well, thread, I guess, with everyone linking all their names and stuff like that so you can get 
together with other people in the Trinity Force uh, community. And normally, once games start going, we have our own clans and stuff like that within those other games too. Yeah, I mean, this is. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, this came about because Overwatch just came out, and we have a lot of crossover with folks from our community that are looking for people to play with so like if you're one of those people and you're looking for people to play with hop on to our subreddit and you can find some people but and there's other games too i mean i know that uh mm -hmm. like thallium and days untold uh religiously play diablo um there's still do play, yep there's people that play starcraft i mean obviously I gotta, we have hearthstone <laughs> right i gotta get back into diablo sometime maybe maybe i don't know <laughs> I think I've already sunk in enough time. I think like 600 hours into Diablo 3 so far. Jesus. Right? Ah, uh, anyways, uh, let's start getting into actual shit here for this week, right? Roger. Okay, trinket tip. This is a tip pulled from Reddit. Uh, think we're getting lazy, whatever. I, I thought it was a really good tip. I didn't I know, know this. I, this, is, this one blew my mind. I, I it's knew gonna about be blowing this one. up towers too. I well, want to yeah, say for shoe monster knows. Come on. <laughs> I want to say this is a game changer because I'm pretty sure this is the first champion specific trinket tip we've ever done. It might be. It might be, but it's so good. Right. I think it. Bears. I think it. I think it's good enough. Yeah. So um, basically, it's just Scion's ult does deal damage to turrets. If you're running down mid lane, you can run into mid turret and deal damage, and it's it can get pretty good later on in the game since the minimum physical damage at rank 3 is 450 max is 900 uh and plus 40 to 80 percent of your bonus ad right like yeah i know he doesn't build a lot of you AD, could i mean if you get a titanic hydra or a cleaver i mean that's you know that's significant split push scion just mm -hmm. run into a tower die and still just wail away on it <laughs> I gotta say, like, I've seen this happen numerous times because my cousin plays so much of this champion. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, when it happens, it always looks really satisfying because, like, he's just charging in there and then, like, the turret basically, like, if it's low on health, it explodes pretty much. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I didn't realize that it does that, but, I mean, I guess it's a nice way to just run in and finish off a turret real quick. Or, mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're running into engagement and you whiff your ult, at the very least, hey, I can blow up this turret, why not? So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people may not expect it later on in the game if you're just charging into a tower and they think that they're safe there. Which, I mean, with a Scion, anyways, you're not safe under a tower. <laughs> no. Jeez. Yeah. He is, yeah. I've said this before that it, it's funny Choo -choo with Scion. <laughs> like, if you're under a, some champion's tower dive, Scion doesn't really like tower dive. He just kind of ignores the fact that the tower is attacking him. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he just kind of dives. Scion will. Yeah. Scion is that angry friend that found out he wasn't invited to the party and he still shows up anyways and just wrecks everyone's face. Has yeah. that ever happened to you guys? No. It's like, I mean, you never you don't invite a... someone to a party <laughs> and they show up and start literally like, bashing people in why with is the... a giant axe? Why is it lately that we're finding out all these like awkward life stories about haberdashing? I, I live in <laughs> fucking Iowa. What am I supposed to do? Uh, <laughs> Have you not had an axe party? <laughs> Jesus, guys. Get out once in a while. Oh. Well, let's talk a little bit about... We had someone write in earlier, but I thought it'd be good to talk about this anyways. Uh, first impressions on uh, Talia, the Elo Bender. <laughs> Elo Bender? Okay, I, I get it. I right, get it. right, because um, she's like an I, Earth Bender. See, and all right, she... so I haven't played that many Garbage. games with or against her. Um, I will <laughs> say, like, her her combo hurts a shit ton. Like, she is surprisingly oh, yeah. bursty. Yeah, um, before we get into that, in lane, let's but... just clarify why what that Elo Bender joke right. means. If, if you go on Champion GG, uh, so this has win rates for all Plat Plus players. The lowest win rate in, in every role except ADC, I guess. I guess for, you could run her as AD carry if you really wanted to. For top, jungle, middle, and support, the lowest win rate is Talia. <laughs> At like and, 30 and her percent. highest win rate is thirty six point nine, which is really low support. 
like most win rates, like even the lower win rates, yeah, like are the next somewhere in the Corky, the to 50 old, range. yeah, Corky, the only person not Talia in that list, is still at forty four point eight percent. Yeah. So uh. she, I think there was like I think she's getting some like buffs. I don't know if she got hot fix, but like I think so. I think her initial like release was a little whatever, bit dude. rocky. Oh uh, shit. <laughs> Ah, oh, so like, what do you guys think about her in general? Um, I, like I said, I think she's surprisingly bursty, and I think that she can be annoying in lane. I just think that she, um, I think a uh, part of the issue is that I don't think people understand how to use her ult yet. I think that is her biggest issue, in my personal opinion, right now. It's like either that they they use it well, it's like they don't know how to use it or it's just not that great of an alt i see i'm more on the camp where it's like mm. i think it's actually a decent alt i think the problem is that they like like all right i'm gonna throw this down i'm gonna ride it and then they're like they knock aside some of their teammates and knock them away from like a buff so they can't finish a buff or on the way or they like you know they don't look at the whole line of it or they like knock their teammates behind or they knock right. them like, like your team's doing baron you want to rush over and help them you end up locking them all inside baron pit and he's like oh Right, uh, or you, Shit. you know, or they they ride the wall and then they jump off on the wrong side. Right, and then yeah. Tracking the enemy, <laughs> so I, 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 I think that might have a lot to do with it. But that's I don't yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen it, her that much personally. It's just one of those I think more like underwhelming ults in general, like when not used really well. You know, it doesn't think... do damage. It doesn't. Really, I don't know. This place I, I, I can't even recall it, it like, someone's yeah. ultimate. Like, I played several games against her, and like, I don't remember like a distinctive moment. Even in the game where I saw her win, where like her ultimate was a big game changer, it was more just like her damage output if she caught someone with a combo. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just really want now a um, Make America Great Again Talia skin. <laughs> 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 well, I already saw. I already saw. So, obviously, um, on YouTube, people are starting to post up about her, and I saw a uh, "I'm Talia, I'm helping" video, <laughs> where she she tries to rush down the mid lane using her ult, mm -hmm. and when she does it, the wall knocks aside one of her teammates into a Teemo shroom and kills them. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's a. a she definitely has the potential for a lot of I'm helping moments. Yeah. Maybe more so than others. I mean, it, it, it is like Jarvan where you can break it, the wall down if uh, you want to. If you want to be Chris Jericho. Or Talia, Mikhail Gorbachev. tear down this wall. Yeah, see? See, he got it. He, he got <laughs> the not-so-WWE theme joke. Uh... <laughs> I don't, like, I, so the, I haven't listened to too much Just Okay Gamer. I guess so. Like, <laughs> the thing I find more like frustrating about her is her threaded volley. Does uh, he have like that worked ground passive? See, I like I like the I like the initial volley of it when you're like shooting off five of them. Yeah, I'm, that's that's fun. Right, sweet, but... but then like when you can only shoot off one, and it just kind of gives you that bonus, you know move speed i don't know like i just i don't think it's i think it's when you're trying to shoot it from work ground that it's not that good like right and, and like, like trying you... to get a bunch of work ground together to where it's like all right now i can run around the map i just i don't think it's that useful i i like rather the like minimum magic damage just hitting like with one is 60 plus 40 percent ap max is 180 plus 120 percent ap that's if you hit like one versus all five of your rocks so, like, yeah, when you have, if you're, if you're firing that on work ground, your damage gets cut considerably, and that really hurts for laning. Yeah, I think they either need to, like, increase the movement speed bonus on work ground, or mm -hmm. make it to where she'll, like, shoot off two of them. Or maybe, or maybe even that, like, if she shoots one from work ground, that it's, like... A bigger projectile that like does more AOE damage, like something. something it, yeah. it needs that. 
it needs that little extra. It just it feels like if you're shooting it from worked ground that it's like, oh well, this now it's now I suck. So her the seismic shove is surprisingly fun and easy to use, honestly. Like yeah, but I mean it's it's very positional and it's kind of like it's kind of like a chogath rupture, where it uh huh doesn't do like that except it doesn't do that much damage like the rupture is a large area and does a significant amount of but damage. the thing is like if you use the seismic sho shove in conjunction with unraveled earth that's where you get that huge burst potential yeah and the fact that you can once like rylize is more of a core so item telegraph though it's but it's, so it's telegraph. unless you have some sort of dash on something on you once you put down the first unraveled earth and then seismic shove it's pretty easy to land yeah. Because you do but, get I a mean, good amount of slow. If, obviously, if it was that good, though, she might have a better win rate. Like, yeah. I, I just don't know what to attribute the, the the terrible win rate to, though. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I just don't think that... I mean, part she, of it is just being new. Part yeah. of it is. Yeah, I mean, she's that low, I don't think different. I remember, like, any... Champions. She is very unique. I don't remember, like, any released champion that was that low, honestly. Yeah, there's been some low uh, ones in the past, but this Calista, one's pretty Yasuo far. Yasuo were both pretty bad. Yasuo yeah. was like, remember when like Yasuo was just considered absolute garbage until right. like I think Bjergsen figured him out, and then it was it. like, yeah. oh god, Bjergsen's a god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, will she fit in that same category? I don't know, but yeah, we'll I don't see what happens. So. I, I think she's she needs. All right. Any final remarks, jokes, or salt? Anything about this champion? Um, the one funny thing they were t they were talking about on the proper actually is the splash art for her, her frozen Frel the Freljord Frel one. Thing? Yeah, I think it does look like she's um she's actually stealing a baby seal away from its family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wait, baby deer. A baby deer now. away from its family. <laughs> I, that's my final <laughs> remark is I, I would recommend that you, if you're interested in learning more about Talia, there was a proper episode with uh, Skyen where they yes. talked about this champion in a lot of detail. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more, <laughs> definitely check that out. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> Wait, what did Doom just do? <laughs> No, I was just coughing. No, no, he's looking at the slash for it. Yeah. It looks uh, like fuck you, just dude. Looking at the deer. Now. Family, like, no, this is my deer. What the freak? Right. <laughs> I gotta see this. Uh... <laughs> There's this group of deer just sitting there. It's like, what the fuck? That's our kid. And then she just like surfs through with puts a giant wall. Not my problem. <laughs> like, nope. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is now like the best skin. <laughs> <laughs> Frail your Talia, look it up. Yeah, look up that slash. Oh man. Okay, okay, moving on here. Um, community jib jab. Yeah, so some just stuff, questions, things to ponder, things to talk about. Uh, cold from different sites around the interwebs. Uh, this question here from Reddit again. Oh, I love Reddit. Uh, if and it asks if you could ban items instead of champions, what items would you ban? Is this all right for context here? Is this saying like just in a standard map? Like, is, are we like saying su summoners rift? Okay, like, are we saying this in the context of ban it because we don't like these items being in the game? I'm just or saying like, like which one would you fun? ban? In turn, if you wanted to win the game still in terms of strategy or salt or something. What I, would you ban? I would go an all AP comp and ban Banner of Command. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel like if I was a Zed man, like I'd, I'd probably ban Hourglass. <laughs> Just ban Hourglass. Ban QSS. The QSS thing, yeah, I understand there's a lot of hater on that, but I feel like if they did, the, did away with Hourglass, like, mm -hmm. Zed is pretty favorable into a lot of squishy AP champions, but they have that item as kind of a fallback. If that item was gone, that would mm -hmm. be 
pretty brutal. I think if I... you want to shape, shake up the top uh, top lane a bit, just ban Sunfire Cape and Iceborne Gauntlet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You've eliminated 70% of all the top laners right now. I mean, yep. <laughs> I guess the question is, is, is this... Is this a... What item do I hate the most, or is this like what do I want to ban? Pick an item. I don't know, man. There's like when you ban a champion, do you do it because <laughs> salt or because something you want to do for strategy? Like if I'm banning a champion, I'm banning it because I just don't like that champion. Like I'm not gonna pick them, and they're just in a place where I just don't want to deal with them in a game. Like what if you're banning an item? My ass. If it's an item... I think you have more to play it's around It's different there. because I don't think that there's any certain item that it's like, man, this item is just so OP right now. But I think it's a little more contextual. Like, you know, hey, I'm Zed. I don't want anyone able to zone you smile. You know, I mean, you could have argued maybe that like Rage Blade was a little bit too strong earlier this season. So oh, if you could like God. ban Rage yeah. Blade, have, yes, yeah. Alternate, like you could go into some funny comp stuff. Like you wanted to play all invisible champs, ban and you banned um, and pink wards <laughs> and um, sweepers. the sweepers. Well, yeah, even if you could, like, ban out certain classes of, like, supports, essentially, by saying, like, I'm going to ban <laughs> the gold item. <laughs> Just ban Sight Stone. Ban Sight Stone, <laughs> ban Sight Wards, and ban the totems. No vision for anyone. Junglers, maybe. See, oh, like, I'd be funny, like, if you were playing junglers, ban everything except for uh, Devour, or something like, ban everything maybe, except for one. Blood, ra uh, blood Razor. Yeah, or... Kitae's Blood Razor, or Madred's Blood Razor, or whatever Blood <laughs> Razor it's called now. Yeah. Ugh, that item. I would just ban that because anyone who thinks it's a good item and they should build it, it I don't want to play that with bad. you and I don't want you playing that champ. It can't be it's, that bad, I, can it's it? It's just not that good, though. Like, I can think of, like, for every champ, the only thing, champs that I would really say you should build that on would be like Shivana and Master Yi and yeah. outside of that any champion you want to build it on I I can make a very strong argument what about like my warrior is better like what about Kindred again <clears throat> why would you just still the more warrior popular build really? yeah but you get that early game power spike with warrior you can you can hit like you're already strong in the early game why not be stupidly strong and end that game early? I don't know. Like, I, I, just, I wouldn't trash it that hard. I, I'm, just, I'm looking at these things here. And I, it's, the question is, if you could ban items instead of champions, what items would you ban? I would always God, just you're ban... Still what, like... <laughs> I would just ban whatever's strong against what I'm playing. Like, yeah. if I'm playing LeBlanc, I'll ban, like, a Banshee's Veil or something. Like... Yep. You know, like, but I mean, like Vigar. Yeah, like, but like that. with Dynamic Q, you could really shit on some people like Doom was with all AP champions, or if you want to play all AD champions, and you just ban every single and heavy armor or item. Nails, Sunfire Cape. Oh and my god. It's an art. Yeah. I, I think banning items would be a, a pretty... <laughs> bad Wait. thing for the game. You, I, I, I feel like you think I'm asking this as a serious question. Well, that's the thing. I don't know. You didn't specify. No! Just, it's never going to happen. Why? Why? <laughs> so serious. So then is, is the question just what item do you hate the most? It's Jesus. God, fuck, man. I'm so confused, Haver. Help <laughs> me. Okay, just, just move on, Frost. Is... Yeah, just move on. Frost can't, on. Frost can't do a joke. Okay. Uh, and then from our sub, we have a question asking, how long would you be willing to wait for your main role over your secondary role in Dynamic Q if you really had an option? And now, Frost, this is more of, like, a serious question. Bacon. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you would wait for Bacon. Seven uh, yeah, minutes. Like, I, I, how are you cook? How are you cooking your bacon? Are you uh, cooking your bacon? Chewy, of course. Okay, I like would. chewy, yeah, but like, even then, like, are you doing it in the microwave, pan, oven? Um, oven. I put it oven. over my sunfire cape. 
There you go. Have it on the go. Fucking genius. Unless they ban Sunfire Cape. <laughs> then you were just. I. Oh, for fuck's Why? sake, man. Okay. Right, this is a good question, though. Um, <laughs> it's the sun shitting on it now. Uh. So I get this, I, I kind of have had this frustration a lot because I main mid lane and mid lane in my experience has been the most desired role by a, a significant margin. Um, I'd say, you know, I've done mid 80 and I've done mid top this season and I, I'd i say I get slightly more of the time I, I get AD or, or top like when I do that and then even if I specify mid as primary, and it's really frustrating because, like, if you if you dodge and say, you know what, I really want to play mid, like, then you might wait six minutes and then get your secondary role again. Like, it's really rough if you're a mid right. one trick pony, especially. Yeah, and it sucks. Like, so often you end up honestly playing your secondary role more. It seems like I, I know. Yeah, like, I mean, sometimes I... you just get unlucky, but yeah, if I, I could wait longer, I would. I always put jungle primary, top secondary, and um, I would say like my average queue time is maybe like two and a half, maybe three minutes. Um, I would say I probably get top 60% of the time and jungle 40% of the time. Um, but I enjoy playing both roles quite a bit. I actually have found myself lately enjoying top more than jungle. Um, <clears throat> it's just, funny, but, mm-hmm. but sorry, go ahead. I, 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 that's really about it. I mean, <laughs> it, it's you know, I, I, I enjoy playing top and jungle fairly equally, so I don't really care what I get as long as I get one of those two. So that's what that's the main thing I like about dynamic queue is that, like, cool, I'm guaranteed to get one of the two roles I like. So I, and that's really good if you have two roles that you like both equally. I guess it's just... So I, I'm i a pretty heavy yeah. mid mate lately. And when this post came on our subreddit, like that same day, I think I waited like six minutes for a queue, got AD, really wanted to play TF. So like mm-hmm. I, I decided to dodge. And then like I waited out the dodge timer, got into a game after like another like four or five minutes and then got like ad again i was like well fuck it i guess i'll just play ad and like that's i mean honestly i don't mind just specifying like 15 mid. minutes of your life wasted just to end up yeah. playing the same role i just specify mid mm-hmm. it, it, like I, I could wait like 15 minutes like do something else and then know that i'm gonna get my role like it i'd be fine with that yeah but why don't you just put phil for your secondary but then you just end up support <laughs> that's the thing like if you are if you do just put phil or say like your secondary role is support more often than not you're getting support but what if you put Crazy Phil? If you put Crazy Phil, you are just bound to play nothing <sighs> but Teemo. Uh, okay. So, you know, That's not I'd play su- I, would, I would play support over those. <laughs> Fucking god damn it. I don't know. Alawi, really. So you play Alawi. He, he is. <laughs> it is silly how good he is with Alawi. And, and Take Timo, your tentacles like, back silly. home. Go be Squidward somewhere else. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's hop into the next uh, topic on the list here. So this is a l- little one I kind of had the idea of, and then Frost made it better. <laughs> As I tend to do. As you, except for jokes. No. Yeah. <laughs> jokes. Um, so kind of called it best of the best of the best. So. Uh, it mainly is derived from a Reddit, a ongoing Reddit post on r slash um, Summoner School. And we should just like honestly call this whole episode <coughs> Reddit or pulled from Reddit. Basically. Yeah, I mean, or, this is for, basically for, a episode. For, uh, I don't know. The Reddit G- give me some time. Don't worry, the title will be much more clever. Yeah, sure. Even though you're right. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'm going to use the Ultimate Bravery site to randomly roll a champ, and then we're going to discuss, all right, what role do they play in a team composition? Mm-hmm. What lane 
what's their best lane currently, what are the core items to be built on them, order of leveling up skills, spikes in terms of items or levels, most optimal rune mastery setups, champions they synergize well with, and counterplay. Um, All right. I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet as possible, but I, I want everyone to kind of make sure that you're throwing in your um, your two cents on it. And obviously, we're going to have disagreements here, and I, I'm hoping for that. So let's spin the wheel. Da, 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 da. Uh, Talon. Okay. Talon. Uh, yeah. No. Talon. Talon. <laughs> why Talon are we saying? Why is, are we saying? He's an ability power support. No, he's oh. not. <laughs> I I didn't know he is an assassin. Just uh, dig. Uh, 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 okay. All right. He's, so he's an assassin. Oh, okay. Like in composition. He kills people. <laughs> yeah, done. I mean, that's what he does. He kills people. He's an assassin. Yeah. Uh, what's his best lane currently? Mid. He's typically played in mid the mid or lane. jungle. Yeah, hasn't Talon jungle? That's had becoming a mid more of a thing. Uh, yeah, Talon jungle <laughs> actually has had a bit of a resurgence. Um, he actually is decent, but at the same time, I see no reason to play him over Kha'Zix. Yeah. I, I say it works, but traditionally, does it really work? Traditionally, he's been thought of as a mid laner, and yeah. he works pretty well in the mid lane. I mean, what does he do in a team composition? He's an assassin. He gets he finds a key target and he uses his burst <laughs> and his mobility to kill that key target, or or at least you know, usually he has a he has a lot of damage like with his combo, and that's kind of what he does. Yeah. Four items. Um. Ghost Blade, Ravenous Hydra. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I'd throw in Dusk Blade of uh, Drek'thar. Yeah, he is it's actually pretty good with Dusk There's Blade. not a whole lot of chance. I'm I'm sad it's not built more often. Like, I but I I, un I understand that, why. But like the whole I saw it the first like two weeks that item was out. It was and like then, fucking everywhere, including and now on like a Soraka. And then, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Dust Blade Soraka. It was okay. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but the reason why those items are great on I mean, Ghost Blade is is a great assassin item. It's burst uh, armor penetration and its mobility, so he can get in there on his target. And one thing that Talon really benefits a lot from is is getting that wave clear, um, so he can shove mid lane and then roam to other lanes. Um, and yeah. so. Those two items work really well on him. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the main thing about using that on him, though, is you've got to use those actives. Like, oh, yeah. You know, having that ghost blade to be able to run in and close that distance on your target so you can E onto their face. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> then uh, have that bonus armor pen. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the extra burst that the, uh, that the, Ravenous Hydra provides you, or or the um, Dusk Blade provides you, um, or Black Cleaver. Huge. That's still a real. That used to be one of his. <clears throat> that used to be like his rush item, just of how yeah. well, well it worked. Th there was more when like Ghost Blade kind of really sucked as an item. Yeah, I but it, that... it's still. I I loved rushing it before. I I haven't played as much Talon recently, but the fact that you get you two can... stacks from his rake and two from his ultimate if you time it right and, uh, and then you're fully stacked for all and, of the damage on yeah, your auto attacks and, and also like the aa reset on his q so you attack q and there's two stacks yep. um so yeah he can stack it up quick which is really nice but i think just having that flat armor pen to just be able to instantly blow them up is better personally but oh, I especially say, early yeah yeah, I think if you're behind, Black Cleaver actually is still a really good item on him because you can at the very least get a lot of stacks on a lot of people very easily and then, you know, set up your AD carry to, to shred down their team. So, mm -hmm. I think when you think of uh, Talon, so we're going to get into some skills here. Uh, his rake is kind of his bread and butter in lane. That's his W. Yeah. Um, yep. Like, early game... T Talon is like super. He's honestly one of the weakest like mid laners in my opinion. But oh, like, when you that, say like early game, 
Like, I mean, like, levels, like, one through, like, three, pretty much. I... That's the thing, like, I think he gets a good He's power really spike at level he three. three. He, I mean, okay, so at three, he gets all three abilities, <laughs> and on melee champion, that's usually a big deal. Um, but, like, I mean, like, levels one and two... Like, if his rake's on cooldown, which is, like, a 10-second cooldown, yeah. he's, like, got nothing. Yeah, plus it it uses a significant amount of his mana early, so mm -hmm. you can mana cap yourself after, like, like three or four rakes yeah. pretty easily. And you also need to consider, like, Talon can't just go in on some of his targets without getting... Like, he has a silence, so he can... Um, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Oh, not sorry, anymore. Not anymore. Never mind. Not a silence. He has a he <laughs> has like that brief slow. slow. Yeah. Like the silence. Those days. Why did I think that? Um. So when he goes in so on someone, good. he's gonna get traded on. So what? Generally, if he wants to come out ahead, he has to like kind of whittle them down with some rakes, and then mm. he goes in. And like early on, you just don't have everything you need to do that unless the enemy yeah. laner is like really misplaying. Well, You're... plus on top of that, to when you land your rakes. The problem is that usually when you're landing your rakes on the enemy champion, you're also landing on every single minion in the wave. So you tend to accidentally shove the wave, and, and he's not much of a tower diver early. So No, yeah, he doesn't really get that good assassinate 100 to 0 potential until at least after he's completed that first full item. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 6... So, I mean, you know, you you max your W first, obviously max your ultimate when you can. Your E is kind of a 1.1 there. Um, but it, obviously, like most assassins, uh, he gets a big power spike. Once he gets his ultimate, it, also, it, it allows him to, like, let's say you get somebody down to half health or lower, especially if they're squishy. Um, you can probably go in with your ultimate and ignite and your your Q W. Like if you, you pretty much use everything on them and you have got ignite and they're that low, like you're probably gonna kill them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once he um, once he hits six, you better be either setting up to kill the enemy mid laner uh, or you need to be roaming and using that ult to get a kill. Um, you know, he really needs to snowball and get kills to snowball. And he really hits his stride at, like, level 9 once he has, like, one, one and a half items out of his... Uh, uh, like, one and a half, two items under his belt. And he can really hit, like, a truck. Mm -hmm. um, but if if you're not if you don't have those items from farming or kills or you just don't have that advantage to where um you know you're really hitting hard he's he really falls off in the late game i'd say as far as assassins <coughs> goes he has a better late game than some of them because he's just he has a reliable way of getting like he's right a pretty reliable way of getting in it's but very, he doesn't have a reliable way of getting out that's, that's but, just, but, just, yeah but as far as like an assassin's job especially in games where there's a high priority target if you were at least able to get that one person in some respects you've already done your job you're done that is a really good point that Doom brings up though like a champion like LeBlanc can typically like do a big combo and then like pop mm -hmm. back Talon oftentimes has to choose, you know, like, am I going to use this ult to get to my target, or am I going to use it as an escape tactic? Yeah, or am I going to use it as as burst, because a lot of times, like, if you're just trying to nuke someone down, you just double tap R so that the blades go out and come right back in, and you mm -hmm. get that double damage oh, proc. Oh, real, so. really important point about the ult, because a lot of players get confused about this. <laughs> okay. Not all, the blades themselves don't all individually do damage. It's, right. So, like, Correct. it's not like if I get hit with three blades when they go out, I got three Which, times the damage. It would be I. Eh. I don't know. I thought about it for a second, like if it worked like that. I don't know. It, it, more, it end up being more of a hassle than anything. A more frustrating interaction about it too is that if you're up against a Yasuo, your ultimate pretty much dissolves immediately if it hits his one wall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we're right. going on to like runes and all that stuff too. Yeah, rune mastery setups. I mean, okay. flat AD or R pen. Like I will. Usually if I'm playing Talon mid, um, I'll run uh, Armor Pen Marks and Flat 80 Quints um, with like some armor or health yellows and some 
usually MR blues because a lot of times you're facing an AP laner. Um, but if you really want to go YOLO, you go cooldown uh, blues. But yeah, you um, could. Yeah, I'd say for Masteries, uh, he's <coughs> generally like one of those Thunderlord champions. Like he's right. got a combo that he goes in on you with, and like that adds a significant amount to his burst. I haven't tried it with like Storm Raider Surge, but that could be good. But I think I still think the burst would be right. better. Oh yeah, definitely. It helps his lane phase too a little bit. Yeah, I. If you get I think to, that I, if you get I really think his lane plus, phase isn't that great. No, it's not. To be fair, no, it, it, it isn't. Get kills. He has like, room. I, I, one thing is, you know, we can say Talon's an assassin, and his job is to kill, like, Harry's and things like that, but if you compare him to other assassins, like Zed, for instance, um, Zed has a pretty strong lane, Zed is mana-less, Zed ca can, like, quickly slip around and, and jump back, um, even at early levels. Um, but Zed is infinitely more hard to play than Talon. Talon is way easier to play. He's honestly probably one of the easiest assassins to play in the game he has a much lower uh barrier to entry i think yes. doesn't mean you can't play him really well and outplay a lot of pools but oh yeah yeah no it, there there's a lot of reasons why he just has a lower uh barrier to entry and it's just because like yeah like frog said earlier um like, getting off his full combo, doing as much damage as he can, is just easier in general with him. Yeah, I think Zed's sometimes a bit overhyped as being extremely difficult, but I, I, don't, I don't disagree yeah. with I don't there. Yeah, I don't think he's super difficult, but I, I think that talent is way easier. But what I was going towards, like, things like this make it so that way when you're playing Talon, you look for these power spikes more, and you look for playing that a, a slightly different way, whereas a champion like... Uh, Zed can go for more like aggressive, like trading with shurikens and things like that, and mm -hmm. then look to like engage. Whereas you're kind of waiting for those power spikes, especially if you decide to open what some people did for a while on town was like corrupting potion starts. Yeah, um, you definitely don't really have enough damage to all in, like unless they're really misstepping before you get your first like back. Yeah. All right, and um champions he synergizes well with um i think anyone who's able to lock someone down um for long I, enough you know long enough for him to just be able to get in e range you know mm -hmm. um you know anything anyone with some pretty reliable cc i think um honestly, I, oh, yeah Amu, 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 sejuani, sejuani. Um... i think that zyra is actually pretty good um, or Morgana, anyone with like a good root. See, like um, I, I like Amumu Sejuani better because um, if you want to be more the initiator, if you start to see someone that's out of place, at least those people can quickly close a gap and help lock up people better uh, than like someone like Morgana, who has to really already be in the fray to lock out more people. But at least like someone like Morgana it helps to get more picks. Well, the th thing I would say, too, is whenever you're playing an AD Assassin in mid lane, a lot of teams are based around the idea of having a, a mage in the mid lane. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you do have an AD Assassin mid like Talon, you probably want to ensure that you're getting some ability power damage elsewhere on your team. Yeah, so having like a Lux or a Zyra or Morgana support is really good, and they all can or set Or an AP up... top or an AP jungler. Yeah, yeah, but like I, I like those three because they all all have the potential to uh, provide some pretty decent lockdown for Talon and set set him up to be able to like get a good roam kill bot, you know. All right, that's Talon. Who's yeah, up counterplay? Next? Counterplay. Oh, counterplay. Him? Oh, like I said, his his early game is really. Um... <laughs> By the way, these were the same questions that were stolen from those champion <laughs> discussion of the day threads, yeah. pretty much. Uh, um, stay he's... in the minion wave so that if he if he throws out his rake, it shoves the wave, and you can farm safely under tower. Like if I'm playing someone like a Lulu, for instance, like I abuse the shit same. out of talent, like <laughs> in the first two levels, and then <clears throat> by the time he even gets his gap closer, like it's so rough for him to like go in on you because mm -hmm. he's got zoned 
Like, it's really... He needs those windows of opportunity where he can go in on you, or, like, he needs to, like, rake you down and then find those opportunities. And if you just abuse him from range or you deny his ability to, like, roam by just, like, playing smart and, uh, and like, safe aggression, like, he hates dealing with that kind of safety. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely poke him down before three. And then, like I said, if, if you can get him to... If he throws his rake you can get him to hit your whole minion wave with it that's better because an overextended talon um is pretty easy to gank yeah. auto him auto him too like when his rakes on cooldown he should not be able to cs if you're playing a range champion right yep later on in the team fights if you're one of those people that may be getting deleted by him uh things like sterics and staying next to your other teammates helps out a whole lot if I you're not words. It, yeah, pink wards too. And then if you're not one of those priority targets, um, just trying to spot him out <coughs> early on. and Stick um, next to your squishies and get ready to lock them down. Yeah, does help too. So are we doing one more here? Uh, yeah, let's do another. And we will do... We got Kindred. Kindred is an interesting one. Oh, yeah. All right, so role they play in a team composition. This this is one of those interesting ones because Kindred is kind of, was the beginning of like a new wave of, of the modern like marksmen and like expanding the possibilities that of where marksmen are found in, on Summoner's Rift. Like, most marksmen in the past were just, like, bot lane, like, and that's kind of their thing. Like, she was probably, they were probably the first uh, marksman that was really designed for the ground up uh, mm -hmm. as, like, a jungle marksman. Yeah. And as, as like, a jungle marksman, um, she's really good at playing the bully early on in the game, either versus the enemy jungler or um, in ganks against other laners. Kindred's early game in the jungle outscales most other junglers. He can really play more aggressive to really sort of get a lead. Um, as you kind of evolve more into the game, she turns into a like secondary damage dealer. Um, and that's kind of about it. She, she does become more generic as the game goes on as far as a role. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, what... what... Kindred brings the team Haber was kind of there like you know it's basically like having another marksman on your team but with a, a kind of an interesting utility on the ultimate right um which is kind of like a counter burst um but early on uh, Kindred definitely has the potential to be very aggressive for a jungler which is also a bit odd for marksmen because they're historically thought of a, as relatively weak earlier on yeah and she is like like I I hate seeing a kindred on the other team because yeah. I don't want to see her b between once she hits even level two, but especially once she hits level three, I don't want to friggin' see her. Like <laughs> she is such a, I don't think that there is any duelist in the early game jungle Elise. that can go up against her. Elise and Lee Sin would be the closest yeah but even they have issues with her. Like, mm -hmm. she is just one of the strongest duelists early. You cannot deal with her. You just don't want to see her. So I, uh, I, uh, she, I, <laughs> she is such a weird champ. Like, she just has these weird power spikes that are so different from, you know, any other ADC. Yeah. Uh, best lane? Jungle. 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 You don't don't even play some, any other role. Honestly. Right, you used to see her some AD carry, but mm, nah. as I said so before, she was really designed from the ground up from for the jungle. That's also where her like passive really makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna uh, get back into this again here. Best items to build. Um, I mean the most popular right now on her would be um the blood, blood razor. razor. Yeah, Blood Racer. She, I, she's basically, 
when they made all these changes around like attack speed junglers like she's because she's been so popular even in competitive play um like they kind of had to base it around the idea that like okay if we're reworking attack speed jungle items kindred's go it going to be affected but like it's always kind of been core on her it, yeah, no I it mean, hasn't she... always been core on her well, was, I guess what warrior was kind warrior of warrior was the big one until it wasn't until like honestly recently um like one of the last patches that devour was still in that that became more of the common build on her well, they actually had to change the way Devour worked for range champions. But like that was for Vayne. That, yeah, yeah. I, I think like I think part of why you don't see Warrior as much on her is because she already has a strong early game. So what mm -hmm. what Devourer did was it kept her relevant through the game because Plus she's she, got she's got shit eighty ratios. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's important that she's able to get those auto attacks off a lot. Plus, mm -hmm. it helps when she throws down, um, you know, that circle and the, the wolf is attacking because the faster she's attacking, the faster the wolf's attacking, which does, you know, helps with that damage. And it, so. it does still apply Devour, but not, it, like, a percentage of Devour still with Wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but now that it's... Um, blood razor it's still the same sort of thing though like it mm -hmm. still applies that yeah. bonus damage so it, it, you know it's um it definitely is a, a core item on her and speaking um, of core if you are going with the devourer around on one them of the, if you are ahead and this is kind of if you are ahead and you're doing well runan's hurricane is almost always the second item that a kindred will buy if you are doing well and you can be a better damage threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, that... attack speed works really well on her because of she has like a percent health like passive essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you really just want to have attack speed on her and then have items that are going to um, provide damage but also provide utility. So you'll a lot of times later on you'll see like Mob Melmorius or like Steric mm -hmm. Gage or even um, uh, Blade of Rune King on her. So. Well you just named the other three most commonly built items oh, I did? on her. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, oh but, I got it. <laughs> yeah the part that I um, like to say is uh, if you if you're not doing well, if you don't feel like you're going to be that damage threat, or if there's already a lot of damage on your team, don't don't build Renan's Hurricane. You end up wasting a lot of money on not really getting a whole lot out of it. If you're not if you don't have a whole lot of stacks on your passive, if you're not gonna be able to get into the team fights without uh, being blown up right away, then you wanna go more towards like the Maw or especially Maw as a second item. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, moving on to some of the skills. Um, Dance of Arrows, which Q -Q -Q. is her, her Q. Uh, that's kind of like the first thing you max on her. It's her, like her Although, main tumble. Yeah, it's much. not the first skill that you get in the jungle. Correct. No, that's a good you need point. to sustain out of Wolf's frenzy. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, so you max the Q, um, and then you, I believe it's the W second. W and yep. then... Q, W, E, R. Uh, well, so that's for R Q W E. Yeah, you tumble around. Yeah, no, it's a lot about kiting and tumbling. <laughs> uh -huh. And the the key thing is that you tumble more often when you have your uh your wolf out your W. So like a lot of kindred is like when you get into a skirmish with someone, you'll like you'll like start tumbling around within that zone and you'll tumble a lot. So you definitely like want that to do a lot of damage and be doing it as often as possible. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, spikes in terms of items or levels. I think we already kind of covered that a bit. Like um, she's. I mean, she gets spikes even like super early, just in her sheer ability to like gank level three. Or, or counter jungle. Two, level two three. and three are actually very strong. Right. Um, power spikes for her. I mean, any. You just. I don't know. There are a few times when I just ever want to see this champ in my face <laughs> like uh that's something fair. that something that i don't know if you it's kind of like a team power spike when you have a kindred is that 
Kindred is one of those champions that is exceptionally good at taking dragon. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, and it also helps you, you know, back when Devour was a thing, it helped you, like, stack faster. But, like, if you see, you can seize opportunities to go for big objectives like Baron and Dragon when you have a Kindred on your team uh, in cases where you ordinarily might not have enough damage to do it. Yeah. Um, most optimal um, runes and masteries. Um, For Kindred, it'd be... Um... A flat it'd AD. Be, well, it'd be um, more similar to like in and, like attack speed points. Yeah, it's more if you have a uh, AD carry page. It's pretty much the same thing, like Doom said. Marks, um, physical damage, attack damage, um, glyph, magic resist. Yeah, and then yeah, attack speed quint. <clears throat> Standard marksman stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, do people go fervor on her in the jungle? Or that's yeah. More common, I'd see fervor. Okay, yeah. that that makes sense. I mean, she's all about attack speed, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm <laughs> I'm thinking that's probably what I would go. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you wanted to play it safe, you could always, I mean, justify the strength of the ages. The strength of the ages, because it's just it's just the safest jungle mastery period. But I mean, yeah, that's. If there is going to be a game where you don't think you're going to be getting out as much damage, like we said earlier, yeah, I, it still works fairly well. And because you're not getting that fervor damage in the jungle, you're not losing out on a ton. But fervor does help, especially if you are getting Hurricane, apply more damage a lot more rapidly. Yeah. Um... I, I think Kindred... Moving on to synergies here, yeah. I mm -hmm. think Kindred works really well against if you have a team composition that you know needs some damage uh, coming out of the jungle or like an early jungle pressure. She's good there, and she's also good at shutting down burst. Uh, so like if you have targets that like you know are very strong when they don't get bursted down by like a Rengar or something, like you could use that to your advantage by using her ultimate. Yeah, she's really good in an extended fight, so, um, you know, anyone that helps her extend that fight, I think, is good. Um, I would think, like, oddly, like, Maokai, um, mm -hmm. because he he's also kind of very similar to her, where he kind of has those zones of influence, um, and, you know, with his all you know, helps make her a bit more sturdy in an engagement. Um, it helps to lock them down in place so she can keep jumping around them and keep them in the space that she wants to keep them. She wants to keep them, you know, within her wolf's frenzy so he can, you know, use his uh, cue to, you know, knock them back into it, say if they're starting to get out of it and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's really a good point. It, it's yeah. kind of like what I mentioned with <clears throat> Talon, where, like, if you pick a champion, you have to think about not only what you're bringing to the team, but what also is, you know, like, traditionally you would have on a team if you had picked a different champion. Like, a lot of times you have a tanky jungler who can engage really well. Um, if you're picking Kindred, you don't have that. So if you, yeah. if, if you have that elsewhere on your team, that's very helpful. Yeah. And then um, counterplay against Kindred um once again like it's her zones of influence um you know her her ult is like a zone of invulnerability so you if you can you want to get them out of that zone um or you know be able to you know force them to be out of that zone uh the wolf's frenzy you don't want to be in that zone you want to fight her outside of that zone um you know her her dance of arrows you don't want to her to be hopping around you want her to stand still so um you know you need lockdown and you need people who um you need people who aren't very prone to counter jungling too since she is such a good counter jungler um I, before we we go there because you had a really good point her ultimate is a zone of influence mm -hmm. but in order to throw down that zone you know if she cc'd she can't get it down in time to save her life so yeah a lot of times if you can Chain cc her and she doesn't have like a Q, qss or whatever like you can 
CC her before she can get her ult off, thus negating like the effective power of her ultimate. And that can be huge. Like if I gold card her and she doesn't have an answer for it, and then I kill her while she's stunned, then her ultimate isn't gonna save her. Yeah, and don't don't fight her in the wolf's frenzy. Just don't like um, she's gonna heal off it. She's gonna do a ton of damage. So you want to stay out of that. Wait, you know, wait for that to be down, or you know, force force the fight out of that area. Mm-hmm. Anyone that can um, stop the fight sort of before Kinder gets a chance to really get going, because like we said earlier, because she relies so heavily on attack speed, her damage yeah. is more of sustained throughout the whole fight. So if you can get on her early, anyone that can just stay on top of her with gap closers, uh, even like someone like Volleybear being able to get up to her yeah. real quick, throw her back into the team, can really just ruin her day. Yeah, and he can throw her out of her wolf's frenzy area uh-huh, exactly. and all that. Yeah. So. If you displace her from the ultimate, like with a Gragas ult, or like if you like devour with Tom Kench, like then suddenly she also won't have that luxury of her ultimate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then um, also since she's so, uh, she really needs attack speed, builds a lot of attack speed. Obviously, like Frozen Heart and Randwood's Omen. Oh yeah, are kind of a must. Not so, not not Rando and Zolman for her, because you're not getting any crit. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that change. Yeah, oh, oh, I that always was a while ago, that man. Change. Come on. Yeah. I know. I it's just like I know it's not that good of an item anymore, and I keep it's... I keep thinking it's like yeah, I should build it, but then I'm like, there's a reason I'm not <laughs> building it, and I'm building for well, the heart instead. <laughs> anyways here um that's gonna be all the time we have for those questions we have one listener question in uh from oliver parks this will be a quick yeah it's a quick question here i think we can answer on the air um he asked i have succumbed to the idea that i need to watch back some of my replays particularly of laning phase in the bot lane there is just so much to keeping track of that i am missing engages and ganks I was wondering if you could recommend a good replay system. All the best, OP. I mean, we've, we've, t- <laughs> we've talked about it before, uh, but let's just reemphasize again where uh, you can get some of these replay systems. Or so uh, yeah, there's there's really TV. yeah there's two different types basically. There's the VOD type, which is where you can see everything, like your mouse movements, like it's ex- it's basically everything you played, and sometimes you can even hear your own voice and all that stuff, like mm-hmm. if you want to hear that. That's something like Plays TV. That's what I personally use. Doom uses it. I, I like it. Yeah. Um, or you could do the kind of spectator style where you, where you, it's basically like spectating someone's game. Right, and I like, um... Uh, I wow, I can't think of lol uh record no no sorry, wow. Uh LSI, Law Summoner Information. Yeah. That's it it runs in the background and as long as it's up it'll record all of your games that you can then watch back in spectator mode. And I don't know, like personally I like spectator mode better, just in a general sense, so you can have time to go back and look at everything that's going on. But there also is a lot of merit to stuff like Plays TV and stuff where you're watching everything from your perspective, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you have to kind of figure out what you want to focus on. I mean, I like to look at what put myself in that moment and try and see what I was thinking and like see where my mouse was moving, where my camera was. Mm-hmm. And that's the luxury of the Plays TV thing. It's also good for sharing highlights with your friends. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But... One of the nice things that Haber was getting to is, like, let's say you wanted to keep track of where the enemy jungler was. Like, if let's say you wanted to, like, run through. I think he was here at this stage of the game, and then you can, like, turn the fog of war on and off. Like, that's cool stuff you can do with a spectator replay that you can't do with your own right. camera. Yep. So, I'd check out one of those two ones, or check them out both. You can, they both, they're not taking up a whole lot of processing power or anything to run. So... You may as well just have both running. Plays TV, I heard uh, some people complain on, like, lower-end machines, but, okay. I, I mean, personally, I've 
I've never had any I've problems had, with it. I've had a little bit of an issue with it, but I would yeah. say I probably have less issue with it than I have any other replay system outside of like op.gg, but that one's so inconsistent anymore that yeah, it's just it's, not It's not me. updated well, so I'd stay away from that. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, and uh, I think that's going to be it for us here this week on the Four Awards Podcast. Hopefully next week we'll be back with some new mix of people coming in, in and out. Uh, Doom will be gone. He'll be on vacation in Cabo Wabo. I don't know. What was it? Uh, Fort Myers Beach. Fort Myers Not Beach. Not exactly. <laughs> hey, we, we can pretend. Anyways, so we'll see you guys next week. Doom, we'll see you guys in a few weeks. And uh, we'll have a good time. So have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye. Later. See you.